Performance USA, the greatest entertainers in America, as requested by you, the men and women of the United States Armed Forces throughout the world. Command Performance, presented this week and every week, till you're home from the hospitals and back from over there. Hiya, gang. This is George Dvorak with another half-hour command performance fresh off the assembly line. And the music and chatter were installed as per your orders. Mailed care of Armed Forces Radio, Los Angeles, USA. And here to shift the gears and steer us on our way is that Columbia star, Glenn Ford. <laughs> Thanks a lot. When you get right down to business, let's bring on the gal your vote's put on top this week. The lush thrush that Corporal Joseph Sutton now in Korea would like to be alone on a microphone with. Excuse me, Glenn, just a moment for the interruption here, but there's something I'd like to ask you. Well, what is it, George? Well, suits are kind of hard to get, and you're wearing a good-looking one. Tell me, uh, how do you get the suit? Oh, all I do is go to 5, the 55 1 Wilshire Boulevard, walk up two flights. Uh-huh. Walk up two flights? Then what? Well, then I wait up there on the fire escape till a man with... Uh, with my build, walks down below, and I drop a brick on his head. <coughs> huh? Kind of sorry I asked you. Well, Glenn, who is our lush thrush tonight? Why, she's none other than that blonde charmer of screen and radio who makes the MGM lion roar, and I do mean roar, Marilyn Maxwell. Well, thanks, fellas. Well, welcome to Command Performance, Marilyn. Yeah, Marilyn, uh, welcome to Command Performance. Uh, welcome like anything. Well, thank you. <laughs> thank you, Glenn, and then you too, George. Yeah, thanks for the assist, George. Oh, that's all right, Glenn. Uh, move over, will you? Oh. Right. <laughs> Gentlemen, I'm overwhelmed. All this warmth and affection for one little song and one little singer? Oh, I can't help it, Marilyn. I'm just nuts about it. Song, <laughs> well, Glenn, maybe I can calm you down with the coffee song. Well, I don't think that's the way to go about it, Marilyn, but let's try it. Huh? Oh, this one ought to be easy. Look who's going to pilot me through the melody. Why, it's the four hits. But my uncle, uh, who was a real airplane genius, he, well, he decided to get the secret of better flying from the birds. Oh, well, that's logical. Yes, that's right. He <laughs> captured 50 birds, then he locked himself into a laboratory and spent days, weeks, months, years studying their construction. And then, too late, alas, after the war had ended, 
He emerged with an amazing modification of the B-29. He did? Yes, he did. Now, you know anybody who would like to buy a B-29 that lays eggs? <laughs> oh, I'm afraid not. Of course, you know, I, uh, you know, I invented the B-19. You invented the B-19? Yes. Well, how? Well, it's very simple. I dropped it. B-38 into a buzzsaw. <laughs> oh. oh, very, very whimsy, Glenn. <laughs> right now, we have a special treat for the gang at Armed Forces Radio Station, B-O-U-G, in Labrador. A visit from that 20th Century Fox zany, his honor himself, Phil Bladizia Silver. <laughs> Oh, Phil, it's nice to be on the same show with you. Well, and I got news for you. It's nice to be in the same city with you. <laughs> Darling, if I may confess something to you. I, 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 I really have something to beef about. Well, it's about time we got this over with. When I was introduced by you, I got a very nice little hand from the guys here, you know? Right. When you were introduced, the joint fell apart. They screamed and whistled. What is that? Well, Phil, please don't mind that. You know, boys will be boys and girls will be go- girls. <laughs> You, you, you know, you can't change that. I don't want to change it. I just want to get in on it. <laughs> oh, well, enough of this nonsense, Bill. What are you going to do for the boys? As a matter of fact, I got one stale request from a sergeant that's AWOL. <laughs> <laughs> it must have really been in a spot to ask for me, and it's something I don't get a chance much to do in pictures. I'm going to charm the fellows with a little clarinet solo. I'm going to play uh, Stardust and E-flat, making the eight ball in the side pocket at the same time. <laughs> Mr. Piano player, would you give me a little introduction, please? Uh, I'm ready now, thanks a lot. <laughs> Who do you have to know to play a song? <laughs> Buddy, do you mind if I play a little too? <laughs> That's such a strong union. <laughs> oh, well, uh, the first few rolls mean back just a little. Sometimes when I play this, there's a fine spray comes out of it. <laughs> Thought I was going to be lousy, huh? <laughs> What makes a fellow walk out in the middle of the show that's doing pretty good and stop it by playing a stale clarinet? I tell you, it's a form of frustration I do, too. I never get a chance to do anything like this in pictures. It seems in pictures my fate is to be the friend of the hero. There's no way to make a buck, believe me. The pictures I'm usually in are, are in beautiful technicolor and they're usually called Hello, Something Hello. And everybody's happy in the picture. That is, everybody but me. There's always in the middle of the picture Betty Grable and John Payne have a fight in Betty's apartment and he walks out of it. Leaving me alone with Grable. Great spot? <laughs> Do I show Betty I'm ready? Do I show Grable I'm able? No. I go looking for him. <laughs> and like a jerk, I usually find him, too. <laughs> where do you find him? You know, pictures. When the guy is carrying a torch, where do they go? Barbary Coast. They always go to the Barbary Coast. Nobody ever goes to the Palladium. You can have a little dance while you're looking. Barbary Coast. And when I find our hero... My pop calls me to walk up to him where he's standing behind the free lunch counter, and I usually say to him, John, John, don't you remember me, Blinky? That's always my name in the picture, Blinky. <laughs> John, how could you walk out on Betty at a time like this? Haven't you noticed her knitting little things? She's monogramming tea bags. <laughs> John, you're a silly, headstrong, impetuous fool. That girl hasn't slept a wink since you left. How could she? You took the mattress. Fool. <laughs> Go back to her, John. Tony Pastor is going to catch the show tonight, and she'll leave you. No, don't say goodbye. It'll be easier this way. Just walk. Goodbye, John. Bartender. Give me a quarter bourbon and an SOS chaser. <laughs> yes, I had a lie to that boy. He won't find the girl he loves, bartender. You know why he won't find her? Because she's dead. Yes, she's dead. You see, she had a favorite song. The very song your piano player is playing now. And she played it incessantly on her record-playing machine. And one night, in a moment of madness, while the records were changing, she threw herself into the K-pop and was crushed. <laughs> <laughs> Ed Lewis Reed. 